Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Some very interesting information today as we uh, begin to catch news that was breaking. In fact, uh, while we were on with Bonnie Harvey for our program called Flashpoint on Hebrew National Radio there, I was already looking at news that was breaking over in Iran this afternoon before even the sun set there. There were riots that were breaking in the streets there. And a lot of those riots have been quelled down thus far by the Iranian military. But uh, uh, as I was seeing that, uh, I also saw Sudan and, of course, the ongoing uh, conflict that is beginning to escalate in Libya once again. And we're going to talk about some of these things here and then I'm going to give you a little insight of something we're going to be covering over on Patreon here in just a little bit that some of you may want to tune in to see a little bit later. Uh, let's first turn to Al Jazeera. They're covering the situation in Sudan, uh, in Africa there. Sudan's military removes al-Bashir, uh, all the latest and the updates on there. For those of you that do not know al-Bashir, he was the military man that took power back in 1989. Uh, of this country here in a coup there and uh, now there are different fighting factions trying to remove him from power which supposedly they've been successful and they're looking to bring in civilian-led transition uh, and the military asked groups to name delegates for those talks there. Sudan's President uh, Omar al-Bashir has been removed by the military after months of anti-government protest um, against his three-decade rule. Uh, the general uh, Hamid Abin Auf was sworn in on Thursday evening as chief of a new military council that will rule the country for two years, uh, hours after declaring that Sudan's long-term, long-time ruler had been overthrown and arrested. Uh, another interesting uh, arrest that came as well, and an, an, an extradition request uh, out of Spain, out of Madrid there, was a former Venezuelan general that's been extradited by the United States. Uh, not really sure what the crime is that they're claiming on this guy here, but interestingly enough, he's a supporter of Juan Guaido. I have a feeling the U.S. just wants that general so they can get him to help run a coup operation inside of Venezuela. A little different situation altogether. RT also reporting that Sudan's military council says new government will be civilian. Uh, but keep in mind, we're going to talk about this in just a moment, this overthrow of Sudan, because Sudan is the last country before Iran gets overthrown, according to General Wesley Clark there. Uh, and now we have another thing that's breaking as well. Egypt withdraws from U.S.-led anti-Iran security initiative. Uh, this is something that just came out yesterday, actually says the name of the group Middle East Strategic Alliance, not Middle East Security Alliance, in the second paragraph, says that uh, Egypt has pulled out of the U.S. effort to forge an Arab NATO with key Arab allies, according to four sources familiar with the decision and a blow to the Trump administration's tr strategy to contain the Iranian power. And I think this has a lot to do with these uh, riots that have been uh, protests. <laughs> protests that are going on in Iran tonight. Now, earlier the protests when they broke out, they were quelched. Uh, there has been gunfire heard uh, in these uh, particular latest uh, rounds of protests inside of Iran. And of course, it always seems like that when they're getting ready to overthrow a country, the first thing they want to do is get the people all riled up against the government. Uh, so we'll have to see how that plays out. There's 13 more results since we first pulled this up. So these are protests from earlier today. Uh, this is actually about four hours old. This is when the protests first began about an hour before sunset in Iran. Uh, just to show you some of that, uh, some of those protests there. So you can see the people protesting the government. And this was in the capital of Iran as well, where those protests were actually being, being held uh, in Karim. Uh, and then also right when the sun was beginning to set, we had more protests here uh, in a different neighborhood there, uh, which was, I forget where it is actually where that neighborhood there was. But, uh, but at any rate, uh, these things are happening all across different parts of the world. And of course, don't forget the situation in Libya. After uh, Muammar Gaddafi was overthrown by the U.S. Uh, some years ago under the Obama administration uh, in the failed, uh, uh, well, I can't say it was really a failed mission. They did overthrow Muammar Gaddafi. 
and uh, they ousted this leader here and really a bloody overthrow and as well they were able to smuggle the sarin gas from libya into uh, through turkey and to use it against the syrian people there and to blame it on bashar al-assad and his people there uh blowing uh, says here it might be hard to believe that but nato's bombing campaign to remove Muammar Gaddafi from power in libya eight years ago has not led to a new era of peace and prosperity in fact it looks like a new revolution is on the way Blowing in from the east as a warlord general, uh, Khalif Haftar, who used to be a Gaddafi ally, then he wasn't, then uh, he went to live in the U.S. near CIA headquarters, is now back trying to take power with the backing of a whole range of allies. His opponents in Tripoli is in the U.N.-backed government of the National Accord, which isn't really a government or a national or an accord with anything. And once again, what does this all tell us? This tells us exactly with what General Wesley Clark spoke about uh, so many years ago, right after 9-11, when he came out as a whistleblower, former General Wesley Clark of the U.S. military uh, states right here. Let me just play a little piece of this here for you. Uh, come in. you got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if... If the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. Now, did you notice that Sudan and Libya being mentioned in there, and of course, Iran? And right now, we are seeing all three of these areas here, Sudan, and we're not even speaking about Somalia as of yet, but Sudan, we see that. We're dealing with Iran uh, as well, and of course, we are dealing with Libya. Uh, and uh, the new fresh overthrow after Mr. Uh, um, Haftar has been adequately trained by the CIA headquarters uh, and has been sent back in to overthrow uh, the messed up country that it is right now. So, looks like the U.S. is back to the game, game plan drawing board there to make sure that we finish this New World Order scenario and uh, it's not going to change until all this is done. Uh, and, and that's not even getting into the Noahide laws and all the criminality that's behind all of that. Uh, also, I want to mention as well, Neftali Bennett, uh, Netanyahu plans a coalition government with Gantz, with Benny Gantz there. This was an article that came out uh, several days ago, April the 7th, right before the election. Of course, this is what we, we were playing that radio broadcast with uh, Neftali when he spoke about that. And uh, so I'm still waiting to see if this is actually going to play out. Neftali Bennett told Rashid Bed Radio on Sunday morning that after the elections, Netanyahu will topple small right-wing parties, adding that the main question is who Netanyahu's partner in the next government. Does he want Benny Gantz as defense minister or me as defense minister? Are we going to wake up with uh, Yair Lapid as justice minister with uh, uh, Ali uh, Sheikh as justice minister? So uh, Bennett also referred to Netanyahu's remark Saturday night that he would consider imposing Israeli sovereignty in Judea and Samaria and said these statements all always appear just before the elections. In the end of a minute after the elections, Netanyahu calls Ehud Barak and puts him in his government. He calls Sipi Livni and makes her justice minister. This time I have no doubt that if the new right uh, is not strong. Netanyahu will call on Benny Gantz and bring him in as his partner. 
And uh, I have a feeling that this still may happen. It's hard to say, though, because Netanyahu seems to have come out pretty strong, but although Benny Gantz also came out strong in this election as well, will he bring Benny Gantz in in order to forge this? This all has, hinges on this uh, this uh, Jared Kushner peace deal and whether or not he's going to need Benny Gantz to try to sell this to the Palestinian people. And from some of the things that I'm seeing on this already or hearing some of these leaks about it, uh, I don't know if the Palestinian people will go along with this or not, but uh, it certainly will never uh, end in a good way. And that's one thing we can certainly count on. Anyway, we're going to be getting into here on uh, on our broadcast on Patreon. You might want to check this out. I'm going to be speaking about uh, the man that actually did the uh, shootings at the mosque there in um, uh, there in Christchurch, uh, New Zealand, and uh, the near, I guess nearly 50 people that were killed. Uh, also, they banned and uh, semi-automatic weapons as a result. And you may be surprised that this is part of a New World Order ploy. Yeah. And we're going to discuss this a little bit more in detail because I'd gotten a very private letter that details more about this young man and uh, kind of gives away who he really worked for. I'm going to share that with our friends there on Patreon. So those of you that want to join in over there, please do tune in. And I also have to announce it here because, you know, when we load up on Patreon, we load up maybe once a week, sometimes not once a week. So those are, you know, we've, there's quite a few listeners there, but uh, they don't realize it until after you've downloaded it, maybe a week later. So uh, be tuning in. Those of you that are our Patreon members there, it will be loaded here. I'm going to record it right after this broadcast. I'm Steve Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.